Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, or whatever time you are taking a look at this video here. Um, <clears throat> welcome for the very first in our Sermon Snippet series. One thing I've noticed that as things are moving online more and more, it's difficult for people to take that full hour out of their day to sit down and watch the service from the very beginning to the end. Um, so the purpose of the sermon snippet is to kind of give a, a good Cliff's Notes idea of what's going on with the sermon in the week and to kind of keep everybody up and running on something that's a little bit, um, takes a little less time to consume throughout the week because I know everybody is incredibly busy during this time. Um, you know, just another method that we're trying to do outreach at First Baptist Church St. Paul. So this week, we're going to continue on. This week, we're in John chapter 9, the Gospel of John. And today, we're going to take a look at verses 1 through 5. As he was passing by, he saw a blind man from birth. His disciples questioned him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, Jesus answered, this came about so that God's works might be displayed in him. We must do the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So there's some things that are going on here that I want to just take a look at ever so briefly. The, the first issue is that the disciples, they're looking at in a, in a very up or down a very binary kind of context. Either the man is blind because of something that he did, or he's blind because something that his parents did. It doesn't, doesn't bridge their understanding that it might be for a different reason that the man is blind. Um, yeah, and in this instance, the man has been born blind so that God can show his glory and what he's going to do in the healing of this man. So it wasn't the mom or it wasn't the dad, which was a very common thought back then. It was thought that if you had an infirmity, it was because you had committed some kind of a sin. So that was number one. They were kind of limiting what God could do. Um, but the more subversive part on all this is they were looking at it as a matter of looking at the man as if he put himself in that position. And the man is in a position of suffering by something that he had done himself. And frankly, that's just no way for a Christian to live. Right? We're, not, we're not called to determine whether somebody's worthy of compassion or not based on something they may or may not have done. That's not, that, that should not be our default as Christians. Our default should be one of compassion. It should be one of love. Um, you know, we are called to love, and so that's what we should do here. And, and the disciples, unfortunately, they're looking at this man in a very clinical way. They're not looking at him um, with the eyes that we as believers should have, and that is of complete compassion. Because really, it doesn't matter whether he's, he did something to make himself blind or he didn't. What matters is, is that he is, in fact, blind and he needs help. Um, <clears throat> Long time ago, long, long time ago, at one of the churches I was just a member of, I mean, I was kind of starting off and getting my, my feet wet in the ministry world, um, this church out in Illinois. Well, a couple guys, they pulled into the parking lot. It was a Sunday afternoon, and they're in the parking lot asking for money and all that. And they finally make their way to uh, the pastor and I were having a conversation back in his office. Well, they, they make their way to us and the individual that brought us or brought them in to us was like, well, you know, like this is what they're asking for. And it really seems kind of, I don't know, it just seems kind of weird. And it did seem kind of weird. They, they very well might have not been, they might not have had the best intention on trying to get money. They might have gone out to do something else other than what they said they were going to, but they communicated a need to the church. And even though this one individual was looking at the pastor and me saying, I really don't think it's a good idea to give them money, the pastor turned around and gave this group money. And then uh, the other individual was like, well, why would you do that? You know they're just going to go and, and 
buy whatever with that, with the money you just gave them to which, you know, the pastor said, well, that's not, that's not for me to know. They communicated a need and I met that need. So it's, that's on them. If they are not using that for what they said they were going to use it for, that's, that's not on me. I have done my duty as a Christian because I loved and I gave what I could to help them out. And if it was by any ill-gotten gains that they did that, then that's on them. I won't be accountable for that. And uh, that's, that's a good lesson, I think, for a lot of people to learn. We, we can't control what people are going to do with the things that we do to help them out. But it is our job, it is our calling to go out there and love one another. And then the third bit out of this scripture here is that Jesus talks about doing the work during the day. And when nighttime comes, we don't have the ability to do work. And certainly back then, people didn't work at night. They worked during the daylight, and at night they rested. But Jesus here is talking about, oh, well, in the day, the day is while we're alive here on earth. And at night, that's when we are deceased and we've moved on to glory with our Father. And so we've got this time. This time while we're here on earth is the day, and we're invited to go and do his work out in the world. We are invited to go out there and bring these people to Jesus that are not necessarily physically blind, but spiritually blind. And Jesus is going to open up their eyes to the blindness of the sin in their life. And so that is the first of our sermon snippets, kind of the Cliff's Notes versions. I thank you all so much for tuning in and taking a look. And I look forward to talking to you more about this subject later on in the week. Uh, now, before we go, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for today. I thank you, Father, for all the blessings that come from your hand. Holy, great, and wonderful are you, Lord. You are so gracious and so awesome and so almighty. I pray, Lord, you look over each and every one of us. I pray, Father, we go out there and we do your will for our lives. I pray, Father, that we make the use of the time that we're here on earth to go out and bring people to you. Um, I pray, Father, that the, the churches get engaged. I pray, Father, all the Christians get engaged and we go out there and we engage the culture and show them what Jesus is about. Show them what you are about. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for all the blessings that come from your hand and pray these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, well, until next time, I hope you all have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.